Carl DeBrody Fulton, Missouri Police Department Christine Pelisek June 8, 2018 11.34 a.m. Five people were arrested Tuesday in connection with the 2017 death of a developmentally disabled Missouri man whose body was found in a garbage can encased in concrete. Paolo, 53, and Anthony R. Caretaker Sherry K. Flores, 58, are the only two who face felony charges in the death of 31-year-old Carl DeBrody. Both are charged with client neglect. First degree involuntary manslaughter, abandonment of a corpse and making a false report Callaway County Prosecuting Attorney Christopher D. Paolo and Flores took care of DeBrody at Second Chance Homes in Fulton, the Associated Press reports, Wilson said in a press release. The AP reports that according to investigators, DeBrody disappeared from the home in the fall of 2016. But he WASNT reported missing until April of 2017 about a week before his encased body was found. The same claim is made in a federal wrongful death suit filed by DeBrody's mother and obtained by people against Second Chance Homes which also names Paolo and Flores. According to the complaint, prior to DeBrody's death, Paolo allegedly took DeBrody to her home in Fulton and forced him to do manual labor. Making DeBrody and another Second Chance resident sleep in her basement with no bed or mattress. The complaint also alleges that Paolo forced the two men to fight each other. As a result of these forced fighting engagements, Carl suffered serious injuries, including at least six broken ribs, the complaint alleges. Anthony R. Flores, Sherry Paolo Fulton, Missouri Police Department want to keep up with the latest crime coverage? Click here to get breaking crime news. Ongoing trial coverage and details of intriguing unsolved cases in the True Crime Newsletter. The complaint also alleges that somewhere between October 25, 2016 and November 24, 2016, Brody died after he was found unresponsive and convulsing on the floor of Paolo's basement. Instead of calling 911 when they saw him convulsing, Flores and a resident of Second Chance placed him in a bathtub with a shower running, the complaint alleges. After his death, DeBrody was allegedly left in the bathtub for two or three days before he was dumped in the trash can on which cement was then poured before being placed in a storage unit. Attorneys for Paolo or Flores have not filed a response to the suit. Paolo's civil attorney could not be reached for a comment where his body was ultimately found. No attorney was listed for Flores in online documents. Also named in the complaint are county and state mental health officials who according to the complaint DIDNT have a policy, procedure, or custom in place whereby reports of mandated quarterly or monthly face-to-face -face contacts could be audited and or verified by an individual other than the one making the report in a response to the complaint. No criminal wrongdoing is alleged on the part of the company, Second Chance Homes attorney Zach Vaughn tells People, Second Chance Homes in Fulton denied any wrongdoing. He adds, the claim against Second Chance is that the actions of these employees were within the course and scope of their employment. And we deny that any such actions, if they are true, were within the course and scope of what Second Chance hired them to do, speaking about Sherry Paolo. Vaughn says she was in a fairly high-level position and adds, there is some misplaced trust here. Retrospectively, looking back on it, we trusted the wrong person, but there was nothing in her hiring or her employment with Second Chance up to this point that it put anyone on notice that she was capable of these actions. And this goes for the other employees as well. It was the scandal that rocked America's most storied political family and changed the course of presidential history. People's first ever podcast, Cover Up, dives into the Chappaquiddick scandal and attempts to piece together what happened in the hours after Tut Kennedy's car went over a narrow wooden bridge. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play or wherever podcasts are available. Killing his passenger, Mary Jo Kopikin. Flores, Sheena A. also charged in the case are 32-year-old Anthony R.K. All three are charged with making a false report, a misdemeanor, Paolo, 34, Osborne, 29, and Mary Kay Paolo, Anthony R. K. Mary Kay. Flores, Shina Osborne, Fulton, Missouri Police Department, Sherry Paolo's criminal defense attorney Andrew Popplewell tells people his client has pleaded not guilty. Flores or if he has entered a plea, it is unclear who is representing Anthony R. Mary Kay. Paolo's criminal defense attorney Brady Weimer tells people that his client has also entered a plea of not guilty. Flores or Osborne have entered pleas or retained attorneys. It is unclear if Anthony R.K. The five defendants were indicted by a grand jury in March but the indictment had been under seal until Tuesday at the request of Wilson, the prosecutor.
Wilson said in a press release Tuesday that the indictment was kept under seal until he was fully satisfied that state charges would negatively impact a potential prosecution of federal criminal charges. Flores be held without bond The indictment ordered that Sherry Paolo and Anthony R. Anthony R. K. Flores was ordered to be held on a $2,000 bond and Shayna Osborne was ordered be held on a $3,000 cash-only bond. Mary Paolo was held on a $2,000 cash-only bond but has since been released from custody. You may like.